The Notaboom ASD 4022 trailer has a gross vehicle weight of 40 tonnes and so can typically carry loads of around 30 tonnes or more. It's common in Europe where it's often towed by a Ginaf tipper truck. This model is one of Notaboom's Red Line series and comes in an outer shipping carton and inside that is a branded box and the model is contained within a polystyrene tray. There's no information about the real truck or trailer and there's no instructions for the model either. However, there's not really much to do in the way of assembly. The tipper itself is uh, fully complete, nothing to assemble. And the trailer comes with a bag of small parts, and these include some deck posts, and also some parts to extend the width of the trailer deck. For the first part of the review, we'll look at the Ginaf tipper, and turning it upside down, we see an excellent chassis. This is a six-wheel drive tipper, and the transmission, gearbox, and transfer boxes are all modelled well. The cab looks very smart in Notaboom Red. There are colour-coded door mirrors and an air conditioning box on top of the cab. The lights have lenses and there's a number plate and some very good small graphics. The wheels look really smart with their red hubs and being a Notaboom model there's a unique model number and there's a nicely modelled air intake. At the rear the lights are modelled well with plastic lenses and there are graphics on the mud flaps. Detailing is just as good when you look at the hidden parts of the model, of all the transmission visible, and the engine looks good too with the Packard name on it. The tipper body is all metal and finished well with a yellow stripe, and at the front there's a metal ladder and some graphics. Time to look at the features of the Ginef, and it certainly rolls very well in a straight line. There's a little bit of play in the axles, but there's no working suspension. However, this is an interesting truck because it has rear wheel steering on the uh, last axle, which is a bit unusual, and it's all linked together pretty well with the uh, front two axles. Um, as is often the case, the um, steering angle isn't great. Um, it's good enough just to get a slight bit of steering, but not quite as much as perhaps you'd like. Moving to the front, the cab of the tipper tilts forward and it um, tilts far enough that it can stay tilted which is always a good thing and the engine underneath is uh, detailed and well worth looking at and when you've greased your parts you can close the cab back up. The tipping action on the model is very good you can pull the tipper up and the multi-stage cylinder uh, extends smoothly and there's enough friction in the mechanism that you can pose it tipped at any angle that you like. At the rear the tailgate opens, it's got a little bit of stiffness so it doesn't swing open under its own weight but you can open it easily and uh, put it at any position that you want to have so you can pose the model uh, tipping a load or loading an asphalt spreader. The sliding covers on the tipper are metal and the mechanism is very good, um, the covers open and fold flat flush to the sides and uh, when you close them back up they've got a kind of nice satisfying clunk to them as they as they shut so, and that's been uh, really done very well by WSI on these tipper models. Next up is the trailer and it's another high quality trailer by WSI. The suspension is modelled very well and there are plenty of hoses and tanks on the underside and the only surprise is the plain finish on the replica timber deck. The drawbar at the front is a good little casting and there's some tiny model engineering with the spring-loaded support. Towards the back the ramp chains have got a very good tension in them and the deck surface is very good with replica timbers. The ramps are detailed really well with replica timbers and a textured surface and the lights also have plastic lenses and there's a number plate. The features of the trailer are good, it certainly rolls well in a straight line and the steering has a very good range of movement at the front. Looking underneath all of the wheels are fixed to their axles um, and you can see the range of movement at the front is very good. Um, also all of the axles have uh, a good working suspension. It's implemented well so that when you put the trailer on the surface uh, you can rock it side to side and forwards and backwards smoothly. The ramp chains are very good because they're nice and tight. That does mean they're slightly tricky to get off, but you can just unclip them. And when you do that, uh, the ramps uh, fold out and go down well and are reasonably flat on the surface and look realistic. And it's easy just then to pop them back up and refix the chain, although, again, that's uh, just a little bit fiddly to do. 
Perhaps the best way to do that is just to pull the ramp gently back and push the clip over the fixing point on the ramp. At the front the drawbar is spring loaded but best not to push it down too far and damage the spring. One of the options on the model is to fit the deck width extension beams. These are different from previous WSI models as they have little clips on them that fit into tiny loops fixed along the edge of the trailer. This is very small fine scale modelling by WSI and they've done a good job with it. The result is that you can display the trailer with the deck extension beams uh, folded down or another choice is to fit them up into position. So just to show how that's done we'll just remove one of the beams and you can see these tiny brackets along the side and they just fold out because the beam will be resting on the top of them. Best to do it with the beam clipped into place and then just gently lift it up and then fold out the brackets. It's a little bit fiddly to do this but um, you can get it done and you get a good result when you get it right. A big advantage of this new system compared to the old way of doing it is that now the beams can take a bit of shaking and moving and they don't fall off. Another optional feature on the model is to fit the deck posts and there's uh, eight of those and they just pop into holes along the edge and the fit's pretty good and they pose quite well when they're in place. With the truck and trailer ready we can fix them together. The towing hitch on the truck um, is plastic and it's best to prise it apart a little bit and I'm using tweezers to do that here because that makes it much easier to push the eye of the drawbar from the trailer onto the towing hitch. It takes a bit of fiddling to do but then it just clips into place and you can then feed the connection cables from the trailer into the truck. They're a little bit untidy to be honest but um, you can just kind of force them into the back of the truck and then you've joined your truck and trailer and uh, they're linked together and then you can practice trying to reverse a truck with a trailer. Low loaders always look best when they've got a load on so here's a couple of poses with a, an Atlas 20 ton excavator and it fits very well on the trailer. As an alternative you can fit a couple of WSI's ham rollers and they're perfectly sized. This is a very high quality truck and trailer combination from WSI and it fully deserves to be rated outstanding. Mm -hmm.